The Honourable the Premier. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, this project has had more scrutiny and more review than any project in the history of our province, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we brought this project to the Public uh, Utilities Board, Mr. Speaker, spent over $2 million and nine months. And, and at the end of that process, Mr. Speaker, didn't receive a recommendation from the PUB, even though we were able to get one from its expert and get one from its consumer advocate, Mr. Speaker. We are not prepared to delay the project for a year, Mr. Speaker, add in excess of $300 million to the project for rate payers, the increased rates, Mr. Speaker, to go through the same process again and probably end up with the same result. Leader of the third party. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Minister of Natural Resources. I, th I, th I think the opposition health leader asked the same question there recently, Mr. Speaker, and I guess I'll give the same answer again. Uh, Mr. Speaker, the PUB has a role to play in, uh, in terms of the uh, industrial rates in Labrador. They will set transmission rates, Mr. Speaker. The generation rate will be set by the Newfoundland Labrador Hydro based on a policy. Mr. Speaker, we will, the PUB will continue to set rates, Mr. Speaker, for residential and uh, commercial customers in Labrador, Mr. Speaker, as they do on the island. Mr. Speaker, the, we need a guaranteed revenue stream for, in order to assure the uh, <coughs> bond rating agencies and the federal government that uh, there's going to be monies to, to satisfy uh, the, the requirements of paying the project, Mr. Speaker. It's as simple as that. Uh, so therefore, there has to be a restricted role on the, of the PUB. The leader of the third party. The Honourable the Premier. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, we have answered this question time and time and time again in this House of Assembly, Mr. Speaker. And it is nothing short of incredible. Not that we shouldn't be asked hard questions, Mr. Speaker, and, and, and put forward the answers. And if we have to do that a number of times before people understand, so be it, Mr. Speaker. But, Mr. Speaker, isn't it interesting that the province, through the development of Muskrat Falls, not only provides the most stable and lowest cost rates to ratepayers here in the, in the province, uh, uh, enables industrial development in Labrador, but will earn over $20 billion for the people in Newfoundland and Labrador over the lifetime of the project, and not one question on that, sir. Later to third. The leader of the official opposition. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I might take the Premier upon a late dinner uh, invitee today, or invite, invite, but Mr. Speaker, uh, sanctioning Muskrat Falls at this point is irresponsible. All environmental approvals are not in place. The Aboriginal claims are not settled. The regulatory process in Nova Scotia is not even started. And the Premier refuses to deny any regulatory oversight onto, a proje onto this project in our province. And she has signed a, long, a loan guarantee, a term sheet, really on cheese cloth. So I asked, I asked the Premier, with so many significant outstanding issues, how could you possibly sanction Muskrat Falls? The Honourable the Premier. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As I have said many times inside this House and outside this House, that when the time comes to make the sanctioning decision, all that needs to be in order will be in order, Mr. Speaker. And that remains true today, the same as it was a week ago. Leader of the third party. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the pomp and circumstance around governments potentially announcing their sanctioning of the Muskrat Falls project is a farce. We have a media advisory going on at 11 p.m. on a Sunday night, and then announcements at 6 p.m. in the evening outside the regular sitting hours of the House of Assembly. This is outrageous behavior by the Premier and her government, refusing, 
refusing to give the House the opportunity to question the sanctioning. So, Mr. Speaker, I ask the Premier, what is she so afraid of? Not you. Not afraid of you. The Honourable the Premier. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And, Mr. Speaker, I'm willing to bet that if we had scheduled an announcement around regular sitting hours of the House, I'd be being castigated here in the House of Assembly for doing that, Mr. Speaker, and taking away from the importance of the House. Now, Mr. Speaker, there will be an announcement this evening. The House is going to be open tomorrow, the next day, the day after tonight, Mr. Speaker. I understand that we could be well, we could be spending Christmas here in the House if the claims of the opposition parties are, are true, Mr. Speaker. And I'm going to be delighted to be here, Mr. Speaker, and answer all the questions the leader of the third party might have. Leader of the third party. Mr. Speaker. You know, Mr. Speaker, refusing to have issues discussed and questioned in this House shows disrespect for the legislature. So I asked the Premier, Mr. Speaker, what is she so afraid of that she has to maintain complete control of the process? What is she keeping secret? The Honourable the Premier. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'm hard pressed to know how to answer. Does the leader of the third party want to come over and help me plan the announcement, Mr. Speaker? <laughs> Mr. Speaker, we're going to make an announcement. Mr. Speaker, I understand that the House is going to be open tonight. Mr. Speaker, we're not closing the House today. You're going to have question period tomorrow, Mr. Speaker. There's going to be question period for the rest of the week. I understand from the opposition parties that we might be here the next week, Mr. Speaker. I'm looking forward to it. In all of those days, there'll be a question period, and I'll be happy to answer any questions she puts forward. 